Welcome back. Labor woes intensifying at the Water and Sewage Corporation, where union staffers delivered on a promise to take a strike vote. This in the face of what is termed turmoil at the government corporation that recently led to a sit-out, or as WSC executive chairman puts it, illegal strike action. Our BJ McDermott has the story. The polls opened as early as 9 a.m. with union members filing towards the rear of the Water and Sewage Corporation's University Drive headquarters to cast their ballot in a strike vote, the results of which will determine if the line, staff and managerial union have the go-ahead to make such a move if needed. At issue, a number of grievances with the corporation's management. In the case of the manager's union, an outstanding industrial agreement, President Edna Roll claims WSC Executive Chairman Adrian Gibson simply refuses to sign. The last time he had a press conference, you know, he, he, he extracted those reasons. And, you know, we have since responded and asked him to put the evidence out there so he could judge it himself. You know, the, the two of us, the two sides of this country, put it out there, let everybody see it, let everybody judge for itself. Now, you know, that's, that's all we ask. For the line staff, the major bone of contention is an alleged breach in union leave and promotional policy vote. Here's Busu President Dwayne Woods. It was established that the corporation unilaterally varied the terms and conditions of the promotional procedure and the corporation and the union went and signed on to a new promotional procedure. Since then, the corporation has breached that procedure more than three times, putting out unorthodox promotional listings and, and um, uh, the Labour Board advised them that maybe they should match that list of promotions to the union with deserving persons being afforded promotions and that was not done and this was done on maybe two or three occasions. Now it was expected that some 300 Busu members would participate in the strike poll along with 62 managers. Both unions agreed though that pushing ahead with a strike will be a last resort. Reporting for JCN News, I'm Brittany McDermott. Another day of load shedding here in the capital and every two hours and much to the annoyance of residents and business owners. Addressing the issue at a Chamber of Commerce power breakfast at the Hilton Hotel this morning was BPL Executive Director Patrick Rollins, who said it's due to an equipment malfunction. Luckily, new rental generators are said to be on the way. Well, on Monday we had, a, we had some equipment failure. Uh, is, uh, we had a few weeks ago, we, we lost a generator. And we can't find a part for it, so we actually have to get some more rental generation for the summer. So we're doing our best to minimize our load shedding. And this will be a last summer of, of any kind of issues. Now, according to Mr. Rollins, the rental generators are set to arrive in the capital next month. Now, the price of those generators, he declined to say. What Mr. Rollins did reveal was it's the same company that supplied BPL with generators in the past. BPL's load shedding began on Monday in two hour increments. Mr. Rollins says the plans to keep that exercise at a minimum until the rental generators come on stream. We, we won't have load shedding, but it's difficult with um, old equipment. If something fails, you know, we, we, we may experience some load shedding, but we try to keep that to a minimum. In news from the political scene, the government getting an earful from the Democratic National Alliance, who finds the IMF's review of the local economy only a confirmation of what local experts have been saying all along. Perhaps now, said party leader Arinthia Kumalafe, will the government implement such policies? You see, while the DNA acknowledges the government is making the country's fiscal challenges, it contends that the approach is inherently flawed and socially disrupted. Sharing a sentiment expressed by the PLP, Mrs. Komalafe pointed to the country's double-digit unemployment, adding that the fiscal targets and accomplishments touted by the government have failed to translate into economic relief, economic relief for Bahamians rather. The DNA leader called on the current administration to find the empathy to end what she called is relentless assault on the middle and working class. The Department of Immigration, two weeks behind processing work permit applications, Immigration Minister Brent Simonet confirming as much, adding that a third of those applications will be responded to electronically. The commission, he said, is hoping to bring some 200 applications to Cabinet next week. He said behind the delay, missing paperwork. Um, a lot of the backlog, which we're finding as we delve into it, is persons who haven't delivered um, 
paperwork. So in other words, I was looking at some files yesterday. We haven't heard from those people since 2015. So we, we're now trying to reach out to a number of those. So You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.